three months ago, I made a medieval army video showcasing my orc army. Since then, whilst building up a castle diorama that these orcs will be attacking, I have made quite a few changes to the army. I will highlight those changes in this video. You might remember these dewback figures with archers' towers attached on top. I got a fourth dewback figure for a different purpose. The warlord of this orcish warband has upgraded his mount from a wag to this new beast. I placed a large seat on top with weapon racks attached and gave him some javelins to throw at enemies from above. His sword has been upgraded to a double-sided pole arm, but he still has an axe for close encounters. He steers the beast himself, since orcish hierarchy uses the leader of the pack system, where the leader must show strength or else he will be challenged by other orcs. I have organized the army into three clans, and this warlord is also the chieftain of the Bone Crusher clan. The raiders are now a part of this clan as well. I removed the long spiked shoulder pads from these raiders and gave it to a different army. Some of them now wear cloaks for the ranger scout look, so we now have armored and unarmored variants of these raiders. The grunts of the Bone Crusher clan are these Gundabad orcs since they have the same skin tone as the raiders. The dark tan hunter orcs have also been included here since they have a similar skin tone. I found a few new armor pieces on Bricklink such as this really cool looking leather shoulder pads with bone spikes and ribs as well as a flat silver spiked shoulder pad that I've never seen before. The higher ranking grunts wear these new pieces. A couple of these Gundabad orcs now have hair pieces as well. I found two more dark tan orcs, one of which is a goblin minifigure, so I swapped around the parts between the figures to give them some variations. You may remember these berserkers from the last video. I found new armor pieces for them, which I think is a bit more suitable for the tribal theme. The original Hero Factory armor pieces never sat well with me since it looked too futuristic. Although the Hero Factory pieces does make them look bigger, but I think it's worth the trade-off. They are studded on the back rather than pinned, so less pieces are needed to attach the banners as well. We now have 12 Berserkers up from 8. Some of them have alien heads since I wanted to stretch out the parts to have more orcs. These berserkers are now part of a larger clan called the Bleeding Blades. I bought more of these tan skull head caps and spiked armor pieces for this clan. I also found these dark tan shoulder pads for pretty cheap and bought a bunch of them, as well as a few in reddish brown from the Dungeons & Dragons CMF. Most orcs now have shoulder pads of some kind. You've probably noticed some different torsos being used. I got some of these Chima crocodile torsos and combined it with the CMF orc heads that I stretched out from the berserkers to create more orcs. The Sand Green Ninjago Orcs are now part of this clan as well, since they have a similar skin tone. In the last video, all the peons looked the same, so I used the Halfling Druid Torso to give them some variations. I also found another Ogre Headpiece and combined it with Gamorian Guard Legs and the leftover Goblin Torso for more workers. Finally, the clan that received the biggest changes are the original LEGO Trolls. The clan is now named the Iron Spine. We still have the same chieftain and shield bearers but equipped with shoulder pads. I found some troll headpieces, combined it with mermaid torsos and covered it with the Spectre CMF tattered cloak. Doing this gave me three extra trolls. I also found a few more troll minifigures for a good price, so we now have 24 trolls up from 16. For a bit more variety, some trolls are now pikemen instead of all being swordsmen like before. You've probably noticed that most of the trolls now have wookie legs. 
I think the fur design can represent thick furred leggings, a bit like what Vikings used to wear, which is suitable for the tribal look. We also have some archers with brown hoods to mix things up a bit more. The siege engine builds are still the same. If you're new to this channel, you can check out my previous video for an in-depth breakdown of these builds. All in all, the total size of this army has increased from 72 to 93 orcs and trolls. The Lion Knights will be in a bit of trouble now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.